Hi everybody, thanks for joining us. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Peter Llewellyn. I run the services at medcomsnetworking.com and the associated websites. Uh, so that's information resources um, and activities for people who work in the global medcoms business. Um, part of what I do, I provide information at firstmedcomsjob.com for people who are interested in learning more about careers in and around medcoms and medical writing and so on. Um, today, I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Amy and Paul from Satara Insight, specifically to talk about uh, their experiences in regulatory medical writing. So first, I'd like to ask Amy to introduce herself and talk a little bit about her personal journey into regulatory writing. Over to you, Amy. Thanks, Peter. So I'm a senior regulatory writer at Insight Satara. Uh, we used to be called Insight Medical Writing, um, but last year we were acquired by Satara, a global company. So now we've used the names and we're, we're called uh, Satara Insight. So I did my PhD in pharmacology and drug safety at the University of Liverpool. And I'd say it was about my second or third year where I just thought this lab work is really frustrating. I'm putting so much effort in and I'm not getting too much out of it. But I have noticed that when I was going to conferences, when I was writing papers, when I was presenting, I really enjoyed it. And I found the subject matter of my PhD fascinating, and I still do. So I was getting a bit worried, to be honest, because I thought I've done so much, so many years in education, 20 plus years, uh, I love science and I want to still use it, but I just don't want to use it in the lab. And I went to a career seminar and um, at the career seminar, the person mentioned medical writing and they didn't go into it in detail, but I've never even heard of it. So I went away and I Googled it and I came across firstmedcomsjob.com and they had a careers guide on there and I read that and I just remember feeling so relieved because it was talking about a person who loves science, uh, loves writing and is very pedantic when they proofread anything, which is what all of my friends are describing. Of. Whenever I proofread anything for a friend, it was always, well, you're very pedantic, Amy, but I like it, it's good. So I thought this sounds a great fit for me. So I went along to one of the uh, careers events in Oxford that uh, Network Farmer and First Medcom's job run. And it was there that I met one of the directors at Insight called Tim. And he spoke to me in particular about regulatory writing. So I've read about medical writing, but I hadn't heard about regulatory. And it just seemed to be a perfect fit for me because it was all the parts of medical writing that I liked. But additionally, it was focusing on that regulatory drug development process, which from my PhD, I'd become really interested in. So not long after, I um, applied um, for a position at Insight as an entry level re a regulatory writer. And I had my interview with them. Um, I had a writing test, which was a proofreading exercise to spot the mistakes. And also I had to generate an abstract from four different papers. And shortly after that, I was offered the job and I've now been working at Satara Insight for just over three years. Excellent. OK, thank you very much, Amy. Uh, Paul, same question to you. Describe your background. How did you get into regulatory writing? Yes, yeah, so I've got a similar kind of trajectory as Amy. So I did a PhD at the University of Birmingham, molecular virology, and it was um, coming to the, the end, well, the end of second year, start of third year, did I kind of have the same realisation, you know, the effort I put in in the lab doesn't translate into the results I get, and the work-life balance really wasn't there, and I was starting to get a bit frustrated by that. The one thing that, you know, I started looking for what I can do after the lab, and the things that spoke to me was... Um, I had really enjoyed what I considered to be the communication part of my PhD. So I love teaching, um, presenting data conferences, speaking to scientists at conferences and meeting all the various biotechnology and pharmaceutical reps that came to the lab. Um, and one of my former lab mates and actually current colleagues who she was the year above, so she she's already made this jump, said to me, hey, you might be interested in writing. Um, so I did a bit of research online. I um, went to the careers office at Birmingham. A similar kind of situation to what Amy had said. There was some awareness of medical writing as a job, <clears throat> but it wasn't particularly well publicised. So I went online. Um, I went to the same careers events um, that Amy mentioned in Oxford. I met the other director, Kerry, and she spoke to me about what types of work insight medical writing could do and um, the types of accounts you might work on, the types of therapies areas. Um, and invited me to an open day. So it was, I think it was a couple of weeks later that I went and really enjoyed it. I met some senior people. We had a nice chat about the kind of stuff um, you might be doing, where you start and as your career progresses. And then, yeah, a, an interview, a few writing tests later, I was offered a job and I've been there for coming up to four years now. It'll be four years in November. So, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. OK, that's good. Um, so, Paul, can I ask you to, um, I'm interested in how regulatory medical writing 
how you see it differing to Medcom's medical writing, if you understand what I mean. So try and draw a little bit of comparison between the two. Yeah, so the, the big thing and what I say to people is the, the focus is different, the stuff you work on is different. So regulatory writers are, um, their main focus is on preparing the formal scientific documentation required um, by health authorities to assess the safety and efficacy of medicines, uh, medical devices, that kind of stuff. Um, and the, the, the big difference between that versus MedComs is that the point of MedComs writers is really to raise awareness of these agents or devices with patients and doctors. And although it sounds quite separate, the, the thing I like to get out is um, there is interplay between those, those sort of things. So MedComs writers will use documents prepared by regulatory writers. And of course, it's all well and good that you're drug or whatever is on the market but if doctors and patients don't know about it then you're missing a trick there so yeah it sounds quite separate but we do kind of um we do play to each other's strengths okay okay and and a, a sort of um maybe a difficult answer uh, question to answer but what, what, what do you enjoy about being paul what do you enjoy about being a, a regulatory medical writer um for me i love seeing the kind of um the full journey of a product so particularly it's to our insights and this is probably true for a lot of regulatory focused companies we can work on a compound from the initial non-clinical stages so when the, it's first tested in animals all the way through to um first in human trials um, and all the documents that go alongside with those kind of phases all the way through to preparing the initial application for marketing um authorization and then beyond so it, our work doesn't just stop once the drug is on the market. Regulatory writers are intimately involved in preparing what we call post-marketing documents. So things like um, post-marketing safety summaries. So it, yeah, it doesn't stop once it's on the market. There's a continuous stream of documents that drug companies need to provide the regulators with um, to make sure that the drug is safe and that patients aren't exposed to any risk. So the chance of being involved in Every step of the process to me is really is really um, interesting. And yeah, I've been there for four years and I've worked on the same products. Um, yeah, year in, year in, year out, and that's to me is really rewarding because you get to see all the progress that's being made. Right, I've got you. I've got you, Amy. I'm going to bring you in. What, what's a what's a typical day like for you? Tell us a typical day for a regulatory medical writer. Yeah, it's a tricky one, but there is a one. Um, it does vary so much from day to day and like Paul was saying that's one of the things I really enjoy about the job that it's um, just so different from day to day but trying to put it broadly I'd say our work falls into four categories and the main thing is that we don't just write all day it's obviously a part of the job um, but it's not our only job so the first category is the obvious one it is writing these regulatory documents for clients and our clients are the pharmaceutical companies that we work for but then as well as that we've also got client communication so that would be things such as having meetings with clients, um, phone calls with them, emailing. And this is the sort of thing that you have to do straight away. So on your first day, you wouldn't be expected to lead a client meeting or something like that. But you'd be able to sit in with a more senior writer and look at what they're doing, shadow them and sort of learn how to how to lead these meetings. So it's something that increases um, as you as you go along your career, career progression as a regulatory writer. I'd say the next thing is project management. So this varies from client to client. So some clients, we don't really do any project management, we just write the documents for them. But some, um, we need to do things such as organize the timelines for a project, um, schedule meetings, that sort of thing. Um, also within Satara Insights a company, we need to be in communication with our resource managers. So the resource managers will need to interact with us and we need to tell them um, of any maybe gaps we've got coming up where we could perhaps take on another project, um, that sort of thing. So. You do always have to be managing your own time and managing projects. And then the final thing is training. So when you first start off, this will make up a lot of your day. But as you as you progress, it will take up less of your day. But it's important to mention that it, it doesn't stop. Even the most senior writers will still be having training, whether that's because a regulatory um, guidance document has been updated. So perhaps the FDA have got new um guidance they want to be followed if you submit a new drug application or it might be just a refresher that you want because you haven't worked on a document for a while. So yeah I'd say um, every day varies but generally your day will be made up of different proportions of those of those four tasks. 
Okay, I've got you. Okay, and um, so importantly, in, in in the context of this sort of a, 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 a recording, as it were, um, people are watching this, thinking about coming into regulatory writing. Um, what sort of tips would you have, uh, Amy, for uh, for anyone applying for a job as a regulatory medical writer? Yeah, this is definitely something that I really wanted to know before I applied. And I'd say if you're watching this, that's the perfect start because it shows that you're trying to do your research into this area. And it's important, you know, that you make it clear to a prospective employer that you have done the research. So as um, many people have mentioned, the reason they go into writing um, is because they don't particularly like the lab anymore. But that shouldn't be the only reason. It's not just that you don't want to be in the lab. It's why do you want to be a regulatory writer? So make sure you, you answer that question as well in your application. And um, yeah, do your research so you can go to the first medcoms job.com website. Uh, there's a specific regulatory careers guide on there and um, sponsored by Satara Insights. So do give that a read. It's full of really useful information. Um, so yeah, just make it clear that you've done your research. And the second thing is on your CV. So if you've got any friends that are applying to do postdocs or something like that, your uh, CV should look completely different to theirs. So we're not interested in um, the laboratory techniques that you can do. It doesn't matter to us how many different protein assays you've done or how many Western blocks. We know that you can do the science part. What we want to know about is the transferable skills that you've gained from your PhD. So, for example, um, project management. So particularly if your PhD was maybe um, in collaboration with another university or a pharma company or was it across multiple departments, show us that you manage the time well on your project. Um, things such as presenting at conferences as well, that's great for showing communication and um, teaching undergraduate students as well. So that all shows that you can communicate and you can manage your time. So definitely pull out those things that you've learned during your PhD uh, that are applicable for communication and time management. And I think the last thing is on um, just the attention to detail. So for regulatory writing, that's so important. Uh, these are really important documents that we're doing. And we have to be able to um, have a really good level of detail in them and spot any potential mistakes. So if you send us a CV that looks perfect, but then on the email where you attach it, you have a typo, it doesn't really show us uh, that you have that attention to detail. So just proofread every communication that you have with a prospective employer so that attention to detail is, is visible throughout. And it's a really easy box for them to tick to say, yes, this person has attention to detail. Excellent. There's some really good tips in there. So thank you very much. And um, anybody watching this, I know I can speak for both of you. Um, if they'd like to, if anybody would like to follow up, uh, please contact you via LinkedIn. That's the that's the easy way of doing it these days, isn't it? So um, thanks. Yeah. Uh, thanks both of you for, for joining us and talking to us about regulatory medical writing and your journeys in. Um, thank you very much. And, and let's give a wave and say goodbye. Bye bye. Thanks.